Welcome to the 5th Element Taxi Build-Up Tutorial. This video is for anyone that owns one of these 2 foot long massive kits or is planning on purchasing one. This build-up will feature a caved in roof and bullet holes, depicting a post Lilu encounter. A fully lit interior will be produced along with the fully lit exterior and interior. To see this full kit in greater detail, click the link in my description to visit the website. This is a very involved tutorial and I go into great detail, so I'll be breaking this instruction into two parts. Part 1 of this series will review trimming the shells, assembling the substructure, connecting the panavice mount, painting, decal application, detailing, weathering, installing the running light covers, and fine detailing. Part 2 demonstrates trimming, assembling, painting, weathering, and adjusting the interior parts. I'll also be overviewing the electronic lighting modules, demonstrating placement and connection, and final install. The first thing we're going to do is start prepping this body. We're going to be building an interior for this guy. So we're going to be removing the windshield, all of the windows on both sides. We're also going to be lighting all of these running lights. So we're going to be drilling out the circle and the squares all the way around this model. Now, if you wanted to build a taxi without an interior, your trim job is going to be a lot easier. And I'll show you why. There's a big fat bumper that goes all the way around the perimeter of this vehicle. So it's going to be really easy to find out how fat of a lip the bumper is here and then measure that against the bumper that exists here. This is a full bumper and this is the bottom of the bumper. So all you need to do is, is trim this nice and even, figure out how much of bumper you have there, trim it to where that bumper starts and then just uh, mate the pieces together and bondo and you are all done without an interior. And now we're finishing these windows with small detail files. So what we're doing is we're dremeling out these holes all the way through, all the running lights, and we're making sure there's a little bit of a lift so that those clear parts will sit inside. So I'm removing this little docking clamp from the top section. So basically I'm taking that line, that ridge, all the way across this model. You can see the line that I'm making there. Here all the way across the model and that will be removed and I want to bring that line up I just barely want to skim where that casting stopped this line I want that to be gone I'm going to follow that line here and then continue the trim from here down. If you have one of these sanders, it makes really short work out of that. You can see just in a few seconds, I got most of it. So I'm gonna take my time and go all the way around this edge and take care of that lip. Okay, most of that was taken care of in just less than a minute. The rest of this, around the grill area I'm going to take care of with a Dremel. I'm being very careful to leave that wall for that docking inset to still be there. The top wall has to be there. Okay, this bottom pan is done. Just took me a few minutes on the sander. I need to finish this off with a Dremel and a cutoff wheel.
All right, there that is, mostly shaved off, and we'll do that next with the top section of the grill area. All right, you can see with the trim that we have a little bit of filling to do with Bondo here on the front. Then we're going to be using some Bondo and masking tape. I'm going to show you a trick to get a very flush mount with no light leaks between the top and the bottom. So first thing I want to do is cover the edges of the top of the cab with tape. We don't want any Bondo sticking to the top just yet. Next I'm going to be mixing up some Bondo and I'm going to be applying it to this bottom shell against the tape. And you will see that it will only stick to the pan and not to the tape. So we're going to be able to contour the rest of this with Bondo very easily. If you're curious about the product I'm using, it's Evercoat Evergold Finishing Putty. This is great stuff. And I'm going to fill these gaps in all the way around the perimeter really want to make sure that this is getting packed in really tightly. I also want to make sure that I keep the pan lined up. And I'm not going to try to do the entire thing in one go. I'm just going to go little pieces at a time. Okay, here's this chip. I'm just going to push this Bondo right over it. Make sure I give myself a lot of body. Okay, then we'll just keep going around these edges. Okay, you can see that the Bondo cured. It's stuck to this edge and not to the tape. So now it's time to sand this flush and do another test fit to see where we are. Okay, you can see that the Bondo really took into that little crack that's there, that's gone. I sanded that flush a little bit. And you can see in areas like this where the Bondo built up those edges back here and so now we'll do another test fit usually you can't get all of this in one pass it might take two passes or maybe three so what I want to do is examine this and see where there's still a little bit of gap and mark that off with my pencil so I know where I'm going next alright we have a pretty flush fit there's a couple of areas we're going to be addressing on the top to fill in some of those spaces and we'll be doing that when we get to the substructure it's coming next but you can see that Bondo really made a big difference on getting those gaps filled up this is the front structure we're going to epoxy that right there rear structure this gets epoxied right in here and you want to epoxy these so that they lay pretty much flush I wanted to note real quick that when you're putting in these frames and the upper part of the taxi make sure that they're low enough to leave the running lights exposed I'm putting LED strip back here so I don't want this to be blocking those lights in the back or in the front you can see how those braces are put in pretty low I'm using a little bit of freeform air. This is the smooth on freeform air just to reinforce these ends that are kind of hanging here. So I've got some here, here, and I also put a little bit here, here, taking care not to fill up these holes where the running lights are. So just make sure those are free and clear. I'm making the bottom pan removable. Some of the electronics will live underneath the pan and feed down through the mount so this will have to get a little bit of a trim to fit flush and I'll be mounting that using wood two wood blocks just like that and I'll bolt them down onto there I'm also epoxying another piece of wood centrally right here this corresponds with the screws needed for the panavice mount that will be right in this area there 
I'm going to hack these cones off in the back. This was one of my early castings where I was experimenting with casting translucent resin into the casting, but I'm not doing that anymore. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting these off. I'll be lighting these, and they'll be replaced with these separately cast tips. It'll make it much easier. I'm also going to primer these gray, so you can see in a little more detail what I'm doing. Let me show you the mount I'm using. This is a 9-inch Panavice Slimline 2000. Amazon.com. I think this was about 21 22 bucks. Great little mount. I've got articulation at the bottom. I have rotation at the top. Um, just a really beautiful piece. And so I've got a wood base. I've got my mount screwed down to the bottom. And then I've got it screwed right there, right where that block is. I have a very nice flush fit. I've got this on a rotating base. And now we can start detailing this body. Okay, let's attack this grill. First thing I want to do is drummel out the center of this to allow light to shine through. Then, on the reverse side, I'm going to install a magnet. And here's what that looks like. Magnet, magnet, stays right in place. This is the grill. This is a 3D printed part. These bend a little bit sometimes. It might be this particular resin I'm using. So if you have a bent piece, let's grab a heat gun. This 3D printed resin is very pliable with heat. So I just I'm going to press that down flat, and there you go. This buildup is the post Lilu buildup. So I'm modeling in a crashed in roof and all the bullet holes. So what I've done is I've mapped out where I'm going to be distressing this cab. So I've got a pencil mark out for the big hole I'm going to carve into this roof. And all the bullet holes are riddled all across this side. I just mark those off with a Sharpie. And I'll be denting in little bullet holes with a Dremel. And I'll be using a cutoff wheel with that Dremel to cave in this roof. Bullet holes and caved in roof. I'll be modeling in some Benton metal later. That, that'll be one of the finishing stages. But I just wanted to show you where we're at now with that battle damage. Okay, let's get to some of the details on the underside. This flat piece is going to live right here. These two little box parts live right there. There's three of these circular details. There, there, and there. And the reverse thrusters. The fat end is facing downwards. And those glue here and here. The thrusters go there and there, and I'm going to use Bondo to seal this tube so it looks like one piece. Mostly the bottom pan is assembled. We have a removable grill. That's going to be a separate color. We'll be painting that later. What I want to do before I go any further is light block this top shell. The bottom doesn't need any light block. This guy does don't want any light bleed through. There's going to be a lot of lights on these, these running lights. And what I like to use for light block is Tulip Color Shot. It's a fabric paint. And I really want to concentrate this light blocking feature into the insides of the running lights. These LED strips I'll be using are very bright. I'm going to go ahead and base coat both these parts. The bottom pan, Rust-Oleum Silver. The top of the body, Rust-Oleum Golden Sunset. Barcode for you guys. We need to paint this bumper that goes all the way around this shell silver, so I'll be using some masking tape and paper just to isolate that bumper.
there you can see the big difference that that little bit of filtering applies. I don't know if that reads on camera, but that is really starting to look pretty amazing. A more watered down wash goes onto this flat platform. And this is where all the seating will mount and the consoles. Let's get this a little bit grungy. The inside of this is flat black, just the inside of that edge. I'm using my trusty little micro brush for this and I'm just going to get this flat black and be very careful not to get over those edges. First thing I'm going to do is detail this caved in roof and I'll be using tin foil to do that. Let me show you how. I have some spray adhesive and I want to fold this over on itself four or five times just to give it some thickness. So just a little bit of spray, adhesive. Let's get this guy folded over once, two times, fourth. To make these smashed in edges, I'm just shoving the tin foil up, trimmed it a little bit so it fits in here. I'll grab a pencil or a sharpie and outline that to know where to trim it. Okay, here you can see I've got that tin foil glued down to those edges, just at the very edges. I kind of tattered that the edges of that tin foil, just smashed it right in there, kind of cut it up a little bit, so I've got that really torn, crushed in kind of look. And I'll just give that a little coat of yellow paint, and we'll move on. Okay, guys, here's where the fun really starts: the vinyl graphics. So we're going to be separating those. And to prep myself for doing this, I've got a bucket of soapy water and a chip brush. You might be able to tell that I overpainted the silver just a little bit over the line. It's not going to matter if it goes over the yellow just a little bit. You just don't want it to be inside of that bumper. You want it to be outside. I'm going to start by priming my surface area with a little bit of soapy water. I'm starting at this back edge. I'm peeling away, not the entire thing, but just just enough to get started. And I'm, let's see if I can position this so you can see where I'm going. I'm lining it up right where that little divot stops. And I'm going to work very slowly, and I'm going to make sure that this edge meets the bumper exactly. I'm going to press this down and I'm not going to worry too much about wrinkles. We're going to we're going to heat treat th these areas that have little bends. Make sure those sit down nice and flat, but I'm just going to very slowly follow that bumper line all the way across. And because of that soapy water, we have a little bit of play for probably about five, six minutes. So I can actually start to unpeel this and see where I'm at. And if I'm a little bit too low or if I'm a little bit too high, I can peel this back, start again. See, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit high right there. So I'm going to take it back, reapply it a little bit lower. Just take your time with this. And check again. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You can see that I'm very carefully pulling away the top masking so I can see where I'm going here. When I come to this little contour, just push it in. Don't worry about it sticking to the edges 100% tight yet. And I'll show you in the next move how we fix those little bends and those little wrinkles. Okay, I came out to the end of the first strip and to line up the next strip I'm just going to see where these squares start and end. Line up and continue.
when I get to the end of an area very simply trim away and save the rest of this to start your next area. You'll find that you have a large B90 and a slightly smaller B90. The large B90 front smaller to the back. The placement of the larger one is right here on this fender. Should be able to lift this guy away. And there it is. Now you'll find around the curves that the vinyl sometimes has a hard time laying down. Really easy to fix. This vinyl is very flexible. When it gets heated, it'll bend and stretch. So I'm using a hot air gun. A little bit of heat will go a long way. Don't overdo it. Just really lightly. Watch this. It's just a few seconds. And that's already warm enough to get pushed down flat. Maybe a little bit more. There, nice and flat. No more wrinkles. You'll definitely want to do that here. There's a lot of contour here. While I'm here, I've got my little gas cap, gas tank cap, and this guy just pressure fits. It doesn't even need glue, just goes right on there. Your kit includes water slide decals. These two red ones go on the partition window. And these are the body, doors, and license plate. So separate these and I'll give you a quick review of how I apply these. These decals don't need to stay in water for more than about 15 or 20 seconds. And they slide really freely. And to seal these in place, I use a little bit of Microsol applied with a cheap brush. Okay, now we're getting to my favorite part of model making, which is distressing. We already did one little pass of filter, black filter. Now I'm going in with an airbrush. And I'm going to start deepening these lines, coming into the grooves, and giving it a general wash here. Come in and really start to dirty this guy up. I've got a flat black, I'm using um, Tamiya flat black, and I also mix a little bit of brown into some Tamiya so I can come in with a little bit of color shading. I'll be adding in a layer of engine grime and oil leaks and stains and drips using Vallejo's Rust Stain and Streaking Effect Set. This paint is very loose, so it'll find its way into, into the little cracks and crevices. Might, might put a little bit of grime right down here. You want to go darker into the shadows. and then lighter where it's a little more visible like this little spot right here there's some painted panel line separations on this and by the way I'm starting the weather on this before I put in my running lights because I don't want to get those too dark before I get at least a baseline of weathering down so I'm looking at reference shots and there's a seam a panel line separation that goes right in the middle of that door and it gets darker this way There's 
You're not going to see a whole lot of difference when you're doing this. Just don't go too heavy. Real light. And spread it back. I'm going to show you that that is enough right there. That actually might be a little bit too much. I might take that, knock that down a little bit. But you get the idea to get those panel separations. Just a little bit of paper. I've got a little bit of the uh, vinyl masking. I just brush that color back. Now to make everything blend, I'll be putting a little bit of darkness across this entire model and I'll go a little bit heavier into these grooves. We'll be deepening those shadows with the pencil in a little bit. So you can see the difference between this side and this side hasn't been touched yet. I feel like I might have gone a little bit heavy on this particular line. The nice thing about using these acrylic paints is a wet finger will dull that right down. Don't make it too dark, just go little by little. I put the two shells together so I can maintain an even darkness across the bumper and into the bottom pan. Don't forget about your engine fans. I'm going to fade these black at the bottom into silver. All of the film that's on these laser cut parts will need to be removed. The red sections, all the red sections are cast pieces. So first remove the tape from the top and bottom and then run them across a piece of sandpaper to scuff them up. Give it a little bit of opacity so the light spreads out a little bit better. So Tamiya translucent red just to give them a little more kick. It's time to start populating these running light spaces with their acrylic covers. A little bit of CA in these. We'll take care of that. This middle one is supposed to be uh, not dremeled out. This is supposed to be a flat, empty spot. So I'll have to cut a little piece of styrene, pop it in there. But these guys, I'll just sit on like that. Another one goes there. The lens for the grill has a slight orange tint to it, so I'm using Tamiya Transparent Orange and just giving it a small little kiss of orange just to introduce a little bit of that um, amber color. Each of these bullet holes gets a little dot of silver paint. You have to imagine that this taxi has been in service for a long time and Corbin's been driving it, it's been bumping around, there's a lot of scrapes, it's been hitting things over the years, and like any used car, there's going to be a lot of wear. So I'm using a incense stick, I'm looking at some reference shots, and I'm putting little black scratches right on this bumper and these populate this bumper all the way across it pretty heavy in some spots really light in others but you just want to come in here and battle damage this a little bit Some of these decals are a little bit chipped away. This just adds a lot more to the character. You can either grab an X-Acto blade and chip away at the vinyl, or you can grab some of that original yellow paint and just indicate the missing parts of these decals.
you know I don't do very many build-ups I usually do one test shot sometimes two uh, just one for me and then one for a video tutorial but when I do build-ups I really go to town I go the extra mile so this I'm, I'm just adding a few little drips here little grunge drips oil drips or dried up gas whatever you want it to be just out of this gas cap right there there you go now this is a really cool trick the old ILMers used to use graphite a pencil you can use this to deepen out some of these contour lines I know that seems kinda silly but it really makes a big difference when you stand back and look at this model so instead of airbrushing in the dark area here, I'm just drawing it in. Big difference. Might not be able to read on camera, but I can see it. And I'll do the same thing with these door panels, just to reinforce that this is a part of the vehicle that opens out. It's a separate piece. I'm going to draw in following those airbrush deviations I made earlier. I just bring these lines down to really drive home that separation. Even though there's not really a panel line there, the film use model is exactly the same way. There's no etched panel line, it's all drawn in. That concludes part one. Be sure to click the link to see part two, where we'll be handling the interior and electronics for this buildup. Thanks for watching.